All right, so we've seen how to make simple providers and how to consume them. Now I want to move on to another topic in Riverpod, which is all about generated code. So in Riverpod version 2, we actually have access to another package called Riverpod Generator, which can generate provider code for us. We still have to write out a little bit of code, which the generator package uses to generate our provider for us. They're kind of like instructions, but that code we write becomes much more streamlined and easier to manage. Now, in the case of these two simple providers we've already created, the use of generated code might seem a little bit overkill, and it is, but I wanted to introduce this idea of code generation now with a very simple example, and then later on in the course, we'll generate slightly more complex providers too. So then, there are a couple of packages we need to install to do this, so let's quickly head to the docs to see those. So then, the two packages we're going to be installing are this one right here, Riverpod annotation, and we need that to add little annotations to our instruction code, if you like, to tell Riverpod that we want something generating. And then this one right here, Riverpod generator, which is a dev dependency. And this is the thing that actually generates the code for us based on the annotations we provide. So we're going to grab both of those so we can install them in a second. But just dead quickly while I'm on the docs, I want to show you this. So the providers we've created they would look more like this right here when we use generated code. So these are basically the instructions that we have to tell the generator package. We want to generate something. This is the at Riverpod annotation that says, hey, this thing needs generating. And this is the thing right here, a function that is essentially the instructions to the generator on how to create this provider. So we just use a function and then return a value. So let's try this out in our project. Okay then, so open up your terminal and let's clear down here just so we've got a bit of room and get rid of that. And then I will paste in this first one, flutter pub add a river pod annotation to install that one. And then I'm going to grab the second one right here. And then I'm going to paste that in as well. Remember this is a dev dependency. So press enter. This is the river pod generator package. All right, cool. So now we can start using these. So then whenever we want to generate a provider, we need to first of all use a little annotation, which is at Riverpod. This tells Riverpod that we want to use code generation to generate a provider. Now, when we want to generate a simple read only provider like this one we already have, all we have to do is make a function underneath this annotation, which returns a value. So let's try to recreate the products provider by using the generator to make it. So we already have the river pod annotation. Then we need to make a function under it that returns the state. So we define the return type of the function first, which is a list of product objects. Then we give the function a name, which I'm going to call product. And when river pod generates a provider for us, it uses this name of the function to name the provider. All it does is add the word provider after the function name. So the provider it generates for this one would be product provider. So this function in itself takes in a ref object should we need it, much like we had one up there in the providers when we made them. And then inside the function, all we need to do is return the state value, which is just all products. And that, my friends, is it. Now, when we run the Riverpod generator, it's going to see this annotation and therefore know that the function which follows it should be used to generate a provider. Now, before we do anything else, you'll notice a little red squiggly line under here, and that's because we haven't imported the Riverpod annotations package. So just do that at the top here. So Riverpod annotation right here. And when we do that, you'll notice this squiggly line right here. And that's because when we import the Riverpod annotation file, we no longer need this one because this thing right here, this includes the ability not only to do this, but also if we want to create providers, it includes that as well. So we don't really need the other one. All right, so now let's save this. So we'll generate this in a second, but first of all, I'm gonna delete the current products provider we made because we won't need that anymore. And also because the Riverpod generator is gonna generate a provider with the same name as this for us in a moment too. So if I kept this around, then we'd have naming conflicts and we don't want those. And also I just wanna paste in one quick line of code near the top of the file as well. And that is part and then a relative path to another file called products underscore provider dot g dot dart. And that's the same name as this current file, but with a .g at the end of it to say this is a generated file. And this is the file that Riverpod will generate for us to house the generated provider. And we need to add this statement in this file to say, look, this current file that we're in will be a part of this other generated file. 
All right, so now we want to start generating stuff, this provider right here in particular. So let's open up the terminal. There's one more thing we need to install, and that is this thing called build runner. So flutter pub add, then it's a dev dependency. So use dev, then a colon, then build runner. We're going to press enter to install that. And that's so we can run a command, which essentially is going to watch our files for changes. And then it's going to generate our code on the fly when we change the files or basically create new stuff like this and save the file. So once we've done that, we can run another command, which is, let me clear this first of all, and then we can run darts run build runner, which is what we just installed, and then watch. So this is the thing that watches our files. It runs the generator when we create something new like this. Let's run this and see if it works. It might take just a few seconds or even like 30 seconds the first time you do this. All right, and you'll notice now if we scroll up, this error should have gone away because this file will now exist. And we can see it here, it's a gray icon because this is a generated file. And we have all of this stuff right here. Now it looks a little complicated, but don't worry about that. You do not need to modify this. And it's explicit in telling us that right here, do not modify by hand. This is all the generated code for us. But essentially what we have now is a products provider right here. And yeah, it looks more complicated, but it's gonna do the same thing for us. So if we cross this off now, because this file is a part of that file, when we're importing this file into, I think, our home screen, everything's gonna work the same way. We don't get an error here saying we need to import that generated file because that generated file is a part of this thing right here. So since we're importing this in here, it doesn't matter. So there's no errors, everything should still work the same way, only now we're using that generated provider instead. So let's see if this still works on the home screen. I'm gonna do a hard refresh just to catch any changes in case it's not already done that. But yeah, we can still see all the products, awesome. Okay, so now let's go back to this file products provider and we're gonna do the same thing for this one right here. So we'll say at Riverpod again, first of all, we do this anytime we wanna generate something. This is going to return the same kind of thing, a list of products. So copy that, paste it here. I'm going to call it reduced products. And then this is a function which takes in the ref arguments inside here. We just need to return something. And that something is this thing right here. So copy that, paste it here. And then we can get rid of this. If we save this, it's going to generate this one for us as well. And we should see that inside this file. If we scroll down, we can now see this one, reduced products provider as well. Again, we don't have to change anything inside the cart screen. Everything should still work the same way. We'll do a hard refresh just to catch any changes and then go to the cart to make sure it's still working, which it is, awesome. So there we go, my friends. That is how we can generate our providers instead of manually creating them. And again, for these very simple read-only providers, this was a bit of overkill, but later on as your providers get a bit more complex, this is gonna be much easier.